Hey YouTube, let's get going here. My first video, so be gentle. Uh, looking to bring you some content today as it relates to my 6x6. Of course, in good Canadian fashion, it's mid-May and the weather has no idea what it's doing. It snowed out this morning, now it's raining. Let's get through this though, and we'll show you this beautiful machine. Now, uh, before you question what's going on here with the tire and rim combo, just bear with me as we go through this. Uh, I want to give you the story about this machine first, and then we'll dig into some of the modifications. Uh, this actually started off as a 2018 Lone Star Max, believe it or not. Uh, I think what drew me to this machine uh, was Bun Nats two years ago uh, when I laid eyes on the first Defender and love the seating position, love the utility. Uh, yes, they're not powerhouses. They're not intended to be powerhouses, uh, but they certainly are a capable machine um, in doing that. Now, uh, when I bought this, I actually bought it with some 33s on it, uh, some nice rims, and really kind of went to town from there. Uh, we started to, to modify it, um, went with some six inch Super ATV portals. They've been incredibly supportive through all of this. Uh, learned some very valuable lessons about portals though, and that is if you're gonna ride like I ride, you're gonna wanna upgrade your tie rods and ball joints immediately. Um, you know, right out of the gate, we went with Keller. Um, Keller seems to be the best. I uh, have never broken one of their ball joints, and I can tell you right now that I have put these things through the ringer multiple times. You're probably wondering what's going on here. These are not six inch portals, folks. These are now eight inch portals. Uh, yes, we wanted to go a little bit higher as we did these modifications. Now, when we went with the six inch portals, it was a fairly stock machine. Um, it was quite good and very capable. Uh, we went with these Super ATV clear doors here. Um, tremendous doors, fit and finish is truly, you know, the best. Uh, keeps the weather out here in Canada. We also have the Super ATV clear window in the back, as well as the Super ATV flip out, probably my favorite modification. Um, you can ride in any style you want, keep the weather out, let it in. Uh, really great for the bug season here. We have a really bad bug season in Canada. So you keep that bad boy closed and you keep the mosquitoes and black flies out. Now, some of you guys may have seen the video of this at Hogwaller. Uh, while we were at Hogwaller, we actually just had some Jake Moore uh, arms out front, uh, as well as the uh, eight inch portals. Um, since then, I got the amazing idea of adding another set of tires on the rear. And we'll walk through each and every one of those and all the modifications, but uh, in doing so, uh, the Jake A arms just weren't gonna cut it any longer, not because they're not quality A-arms, they certainly are quality, uh, but we wanted to get this thing up higher, a lot higher. And so we went with uh, Super ATV six inch lift. It definitely made this thing a lot wider. Uh, the ride quality is tremendously better as well. Um, I don't know if you guys get any action on the uh, Defender uh, outside, but I do find them a little bit tippy when you start getting higher up. Uh, by adding the extra few inches out, um, it gave us just a little bit more stability as we're, we're nice and high. So um, just kind of talking a little bit about the Super ATV 6-inch lift. Uh, what inspired me to do this 6x6 uh, is that nobody's actually done one, uh, at least not at the date in which I started this project. And it was quite an extensive project at that. So for those that don't know, the new 6x6s are actually a regular Defender with a bolt-on frame. And so if you can just see right here, that is my original trailer hitch and it just bolts right in and here's the actual six by six frame and this is oem from canm oem bolts you name it it's all here now the difference is is yes we had to extend it um we had to cut it just about here put frame stiffeners in there and get this a little bit longer uh extended the drive shaft as well now i do apologize about the rust we are learning uh so if you're going to do anything like this absolutely get it powder coated this is all coming back off, getting sandblasted and powder coated in the very near future. Um, absolutely imperative to have quality items. And so, you know, a unique build like this can't have rust on it. I am gonna sand it down uh, over the next few days and just hit it with some paint. Um, but that is because we actually use our stuff. This is not SEMA built stuff. This is purpose built and we are going to abuse it as such. Uh, great. So extended the frame, uh, got that on there. The six by six is actually a four by four now, and it's driven by my friend, Brennan, beautiful machine. Um, and then we looked at the actual deck that Can-Am came with and it's a beautiful deck. Uh, I'm not a big fan of plastic for utility. Uh, it does get beat up. 
Uh, so we decided to make a hard deck. And so I'll just get you a quick shot up under here. This is an aluminum deck itself, but everything underneath is solid steel. It probably weighs about four or 500 pounds. It's quite heavy, uh, but it was intended to actually be abused. And so um, we certainly did that. Knowing that it was gonna be a fairly heavy deck and the fact that we do wanna use it, it is also on a hydraulic as well. Um, so the hydraulic control for that is actually in an intuitive place right here. And so you hit the button, Let's see if I can do it for you. Goes up. And we've actually been able to lift a Renegade up there. I think they're about 900 to 1,000 pounds. At any rate, um, let's talk about some of the modifications. So we talked about the Super ATV 6-inch lift, the Super ATV portals, uh, their tie rods. We do have limit straps on all six corners of this machine. Uh, I have really bad luck with axle dropout. I don't know if it's just because my axles are not the right length, uh, but with these straps, they do limit that entirely. We also have some whiskey throttle off-road track bars. Uh, again, lessons learned, right, is you do get a lot of movement uh, up front, especially if you're riding aggressively. And so they really stiffen up the front end uh, quite nicely. Um, now, we get a lot of questions about the dually setup and how it works. It's actually quite simple. So these are the rims that I had made. They're not intended to be beautiful, but they certainly are functional. And the reason why I kept the other set off is to show you exactly this. So these Super ATV hubs, we actually drilled out and tapped for Duramax size studs. We knew that'd be taking a ton of load and a ton of torque. And so we wanted a stud that wasn't gonna break. And my good friend Jordan over at JH Performance made these solid steel, I guess you could call them spacers or adapters. And so it's quite intuitive and quite simple. It just bolts right on like this. And those are your Can-Am studs and you put your other tire and rim on there. Um, future setups, um, obviously learning as we're going, is I'll probably go with a deeper dish on this rim over here. Um, not particularly sure uh, what rim I'd go with, but you know, knowing that this is a show rig, or excuse me, is an actual, not a show rig, and an actual rig we're gonna use, we, I actually like the functionality of being able to go down to a single and then, you know, rip around, do a bounty hole, and then go back to a double, um, just to kind of be a party rig, a little more stable. We do have S3 springs all the way around. Uh, absolutely love the ride quality of these. They also give you uh, a nice little bump and a lift. I think it's about two inches. For sound, our friends over at Audio Forms, this is their level five. You cannot be in this thing at half volume. It is incredibly loud. In fact, we also added some wake towers at the back with, uh, with a whiskey throttle off-road wake tower bar that does unpin there and swings up so this deck can go up fully. We do have rock lights all over this as well as four winches. That's right, four. We've got a Super ATV 5,000 pound here that is direct to frame. We have a 17,000 pound Samurai winch here. When that thing pulls, it pulls. I'm telling you. We have a 9,500 pound on the front. And then we have the stock winch that came with it. I think it's a super winch and I think it's a 4,500. We have a halo locker. We have Jake Moore's uh, steering rack brace in here as well. Um, that's super imperative. Uh, when you lift these defenders, they like to eat steering racks. So you wanna get that as stiff as possible. On top of that, my favorite, favorite mod has to be without a doubt, the turbo kit. The boys over at Force Turbo hooked us up. When we bolted on all these tires and we're going down the road, I just thought this thing was gutless. I mean, these things aren't party machines in terms of speed, but adding their turbo kit, the fit and finish, the drivability, everything that this kit has done has brought back the stock power, if not more. It sounds absolutely incredible. Further to that, we're only running the 5 PSI tune, which is certainly more than enough for what we're gonna be doing, but you can actually increase that quite substantially to a larger tune. Uh, I think you just need some injectors. Um, 
and I think you might have to add an intercooler past 5 PSI. Uh, yes, we are running stock clutching. I've had no issues with stock clutching. We are running a stock belt. No issues with that either. Uh, I do party with this thing quite frequently. Uh, I like to spin the tires, like to climb some crazy stuff. Let's get this thing started for you folks. You can actually hear what it sounds like. <laughs> That's a backup camera starting up. No longer sounding stock, is it? Absolutely love that sound. It reminds me a little bit of a, a motorcycle. It's probably my dirtiest sounding machine I own. Runs and drives incredibly smooth. Uh, the braking uh, does need to be improved slightly. Uh, we are spinning quite a bit of tire here. Uh, we've only got one brake caliper here. Uh, future modification is we are going to add another brake caliper onto this uh, over here on this side uh, and the other side as well to help try and bring that mass down to a, a slow speed. Uh, we do have the OEM Can-Am heater. This thing really is amazing. It does bump out some BTUs. And of course, everything is managed here by this DynoJet controller. So we can increase our tune or decrease it, do data logs, all that fun stuff. In and out, this machine was built for use. Uh, I do not build SEMA stuff, just wanna let you guys know. Um, we do use this stuff quite frequently. We do go deep in it. There's several videos of that already. Uh, very transparent with my future upgrades. Uh, I plan on just kind of making it a little bit prettier. We're gonna get some new doors on here. Um, we're going with the exact same set of doors. These have been on the machine for almost three years. They've taken a bit of abuse. Uh, I've had a few of them open up while going into a mud hole and getting ripped off. Again, just going back to the fact that we use our stuff. Uh, you know, I do plan on bringing you guys some specialized content. I think I'm one of the only Canadians that builds, I call them Southern style rigs, but big lifted rigs. Uh, we're gonna bring you some specialized content whereby we build crazy stuff like this and, and actually use it. It's not gonna sit on a Las Vegas showroom floor and be polished every 10 seconds. We're gonna wreck it. We're gonna break some parts. We're gonna upset some people. But at the end of the day, 